Hello viewers, today we're going to continue with the assembly of the S52. Especially we're going to continue with the assembly of the Vanus. So before the assembly of course we're going to do some, let's call it a rebuild. I'm not sure if this is the right name to say it, but we're going to change some seals. We, I have bought the rattle kit and the tool for doing this job. The engine is waiting there. I don't know for how long. While I'm doing this, I'm working on this V8 M62 which is going to go once again in E36 but this is going to be a separate series so let me show you what we have today and what we're going to do here is the vanus, the body of, of it here we have, yeah this is just the bolts, this is the caps from behind they are the same, if you mix them it's not the end of the world this is the spherical gears I believe it was called which we're going to change, they are different the exhaust and the intake one is different so it's easy to check which one is exhaust and which one is intake by looking the length of this let's call it a nut or something like that as we can see they are different the exhaust one was the longer one and the intake one was the shorter one so here we're going to install the anti rattle kit which is this uh, everything which I bought is from Basin as we can see here Basin Systems I was expecting that I bought the bearings which is inside the spherical gears but I guess I'm wrong. This is all the seals which we're going to use, the Teflon ones and the normal rubber ones. So this is the tool for undoing this, let's call a nut, with these two holes. So you're going to need a special tool for this and I highly recommend you to buy this from Basin because uh, this is going to save you a lot of hassle. The other things which most of you are going to know which have this engine is this oil pump, valve oil pump disc. As you can see, we have a two holes. And yeah, I didn't bought this from Basin, I have done it by myself. If I remember right, we have drilled these holes with 9.7 millimeters drill bit. And let me show you the difference. We, we have aimed for 0.1 millimeter of clearance between the gears of the hub, of the exhaust hub and the holes which we have done and hopefully you guys can hear that we have almost none slack and if we go on the original holes which are here pretty obvious that the slack is a lot I believe uh, the slack, the original slack on the original holes on this disc is 1 millimeter and we have decided to make it 0.1 so this is going to drastically increase the life of these teeth on this hub. As you can see most of the time they break down and some of them go down in the open and uh, you're going to have some vanus issues after that. So that's why we have decided to do our own holes. That's why I decided to do it by myself because uh, this disc is kind of expensive and yeah, we are in Bulgaria. So if I need to buy it from Basin or not buy it, send my and after that they resend it back to me after they have done this it's going to be really expensive so that's why I decided to do, do it by myself here are the holes for the springs these springs here we have four of them with four pistons or valves let's call it which is locating the disc eccentrically inside here so the disc is installed here when I start reassembling we, you're going to see where they are installed actually there are some cups inside which you can remove if you want to place them in other disc but because I'm reusing my old one I haven't removed them but as you can see inside we have some cups or I don't know how to call this which the springs are sitting on so yeah I haven't removed them so once again I believe we drew it with 9.7 yeah it's really important to drill it exactly in the same location where, where the original ones are drilled you cannot randomly start drilling some holes because uh, you're going to have issues after that and actually if you are doing this job this is a mandatory and it is a must because if you break down this hub this is really pricey so I highly recommend you to do this so to save your hub from breaking down if it's not break down already I was lucky and it is in good condition so now I'm going to clean up a little bit of the body of the vanus and we're going to start doing the stuff which I showed you, probably we're going to start with the seals and after that we're going to continue with the rattle kit. Okay, so I'm going to start with the seals of the P-51 
pistons, I think they are called pistons. So there is a difference between the intake and the exhaust one. So I'm going to remove them to show you. I'm just going to need to press from here and it's going to fall down. So this is the intake one. And for the exhaust one, I'm going to need a screwdriver. So it doesn't need a lot of force to fall down. So this is the exhaust one and as we can see the exhaust one oops, sorry the exhaust one has two let's call it seals in total actually four and the intake one has only here on the top so as on the M52 and M54 I'm going to cut with this razor knife the Teflon ring and I'm going to remove them because like that is almost impossible to remove it. So the only way to do it is by cutting it. Okay. So this is the first one. And underneath it has one more, which is should be a rubber one. Uh, but once again, I'm going to cut it. Okay, so this is a smaller one, the rubber o-ring. And now, once again, the bigger one. Okay, so this is the Teflon one. Once again, I'm going to try with this to remove the rubber one. Okay, this time will be much more easier. So now, Actually, let me remove this one also because I'm going to use a hot water to soften up a little bit the Teflon O-rings and I want to do it all together. Actually, the o-ring is not so brittle, so I guess they were not in so bad condition. So okay, all of them are removed, the three of them. Now I'm going to take some hot water and I'm going to soak up the Teflon rings. But yeah, first of all, I'm going to clean up the pistons with some brake cleaner and going to install the rubber ones because they are easy to be installed. So the bigger seals are identical. I mean these ones here. They are all the same, so you cannot mix them up. So we have this two in top uh, in total and uh, this smaller one. And we have one which is the opposite. As we can see here, first is the rubber one and after one is the Teflon one. But we're going to install it after we install these ones. So now I'm going to install first the rubber O-rings. As I told you, they are pretty easy to be installed because they are stretching easily. It's not like the Teflon ones. Like that. And the smaller one. Like that. And now as I told you, I'm going to soak up the Teflon rings in hot water. Right now the Teflon rings are in the hot water. And now I'm going to start with one of it to try to install it. As I told you, the bigger ones are identical, so it doesn't matter where you're going to install it. So they are stretching really hard. It actually it turned over. Twisting it. Yeah, they are twisted. They are twisting really easy. So let me try one more time. Ok, 
is still a little bit crooked. Uh, but I think little by little is going to get to its form. So yeah, of course we're going to place it in its location, so it's going to take its own original form. Uh, but yeah, for now it looks decent. So I'm going to continue with the other big one. This uh, jump for a people with tough fingernails. So okay, this one is also installed. So let's try the smaller one. So I believe the smaller one is the hardest one because it has two obstructions. The first one, no, the bigger one. So the thing that we're going to do is to try to install it inside the valves unit, so to make the Teflon rings to take the first shape. So let me try to install it. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of silicone grease on them. Okay, just a smidge. So, let's see, it's going to go in. So, this is the, actually this is the exhaust one. So, yeah, that won't go in. Probably going to need to compress it with something, probably with some, yeah, with some bracket. Let me try the intake one. Okay, I'm going to try with some bracket because I don't want to damage the telephone rings because I don't have any additional ones. Okay, so I managed to install the intake one using the insulation, insulation tape type. Because I don't want to use the bracket because the bracket is a little bit abrasive and can damage the Teflon rings. So I prefer to do it like this. Yeah, it's a little bit harder, but it's much more safer. So like that, I'm putting a little bit pressure and hopefully it's going to compress a little bit the Teflon ring. I'm going to do the same for the smaller one. I'm going to leave it for a few seconds. And hopefully this is going to compress them a little bit. This is the way I've done it with the intake one. I think I'm going to be able to do it to the exhaust one. Once again, if you still want to do with the bracket, I highly recommend to use this electrical tape because you're going to cover the Teflon ring and it's much less possible to make some damage to it. So let's give it a try. Okay, let's try. Okay, so the bigger ring got inside. Now I'm going to leave it for a few seconds and going to try the smaller one. Okay, so just to show you the exhaust one, how it got in. Okay. It feels with tension, so it should be like that for sure, both of them. So the both pistons, I don't know, these pistons or shafts, I'm not sure how to call them, are ready. So the only thing that it left to install on the Teflon side is these ones, which are kind of hard to film it, but I'm going to try. Uh, but the O-ring is right 
there inside. So yeah, it's going to be impossible to film it. So you're going to need to trust me how I do it. But probably going to use once again this pick to try to take it out. For the replacement, I'm going to show you one trick which Basin is showing in their website. So let me first try to remove them. Uh, so this is the old ones which I managed to remove with this pick. Actually, it was kind of easy. And this is the Teflon one, this is the rubber one. But it's kind of hard to try to not twist it when you install it. Like for this games through this also. When you install the rubber ones underneath the Teflon ones, you need to make sure that they are not twisted. Uh, because if they are twisted, you're going to have some issues after that. So always recheck your O-rings when you install it for twisting. Okay, so after a lot of hustle, we managed to install the rubber one. It was a really picky job, I'm not going to lie. For sure, it's impossible to film this. But now we're going to continue with the Teflon one. So I'm going to try the method which Basin is recommending. It looks kind of disturbing, but uh, they do it like that. So I'm going to try the same. Hopefully I'm not going to damage the Teflon ring. So I'm just going to use this thin pliers. I just have put some hitch ring on the tips of them. So to not damage anything. So let me curve it a little bit. It's going to be something like a heart. So something like that. So I'm going to try with the pliers now. Easier said than done. I'm not sure maybe with well, I'm going to be able to do it without the pliers, but let me first try with them. So now I'm just going to place it in the hole. Hopefully. And yeah. You guys probably not seen anything, but but right now it's looking like that. So I'm going to try to push it a little bit with a screwdriver. I'm there. Okay, and it's almost flat. Yeah. I think it's fine. So this is the installation of the Teflon ring. For sure it's much more easier than the rubber one. Now I'm going to get once again the bot shafts in their places. This is going to make this Teflon ring to get in its original form. So let me install them. Actually we have uh, these O-rings only on the intake one. On the ex exhaust one we don't have it. So we have it only there. So like so i'm going to leave it for a second yeah i install it on the opposite side uh, just to make the tape ring get in its form and after that i'm going to place it on the other side but this is just to make it fit now i'm going to try to locate this on the other side yeah, everything seems fine let me check it yeah everything seems fine Okay, like so. Before the final assembly, I'm going to put some assembly loop on these shafts. Uh, but now I'm going to continue with the assembly of the, the pump disc. Okay, because we have redone my disc of the O pump, I already have removed this C clip, I believe it's called. So I'm going to remove it once again. So to be able to install the disc. Actually, I took the wrong pliers, just a second. I'm going to try to remove it. Like that. After that, we're going to have this, let's call shim. It's completely flat, as we can see. And it's kind of thin. And inside, we're going to have this ring, which is where the, this little, I don't know, pistons or sleeves are sitting. So they are staying in this channel. This is preventing them getting out from here. So I'm just going to clean it a little bit. And we're going to assemble everything. So before we install everything, we need to 
assemble all the springs and these pistons or sleeves. So it's kind of picky job because you need to install all four of them together. So I'm going to give my best. But probably we're going to have some flying springs. So as I told you, the idea is this leaf to be in this groove of the bearing. So I'm going to try to do it. But I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have some fails. Like this one. And here, after that, I'm going to put some loop so don't get crazy. Yeah. Actually, okay, after the first last fail, we have lost the spring, but we managed to find it after some disturbing searching. So, I'm going to try with this electric tape so to reduce the chances of losing one of the components because after that it's going to be impossible to find the new ones so let's give it a try like that now i'm going to put once again electric tape here just to make my wife a little bit safer like that and now the last one. Okay. I think it's fine. So now I'm going to remove the electrical tape. Okay. So all of them are looking that are in place as we can see this is how it should be looking and it is moving in all the ways so now i'm going to install it here but before that i'm going to put some assembly loop So the holes are pointing upwards like that. <laughs> yeah, and one of the springs get out okay okay so i'm going to need to take it out once again yeah 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 which one oh then <laughs> okay give me a second guys okay after a lot of struggling we managed to install it we need to remove it once again and install it all over again uh, because it's kind of picky job, but when you figure it out once, you're going to manage to do it. So just going to put a little bit more assembly loop. So to be sure that there will be no dragging or anything like that. So everything seems fine. Like that now is this washer, which is really gentle. It's kind of easy to bend it, but if you bend it, it's not big of a deal. Uh, so I think it should no matter how you're going to install it. Yeah, like that. But now the C clip. You need to make sure that it's in the groove. Like so, if you manage to install it in the groove, you're going to be sure that the disc and everything else is installed correctly. So this was the annoying procedure of installing this open pump disc. So everything seems smooth and fine. 
it should be rotated freely like ours. So yeah, pretty much this is the assembly. Actually, let me just quickly put some, I want to put some assembly loop on the shafts. Just to know that everything is going to be fine. So once again, the intake one is without this additional ring. And the exhaust one has two of them. Okay, like that. So now we're going to continue with this spherical gears. We're going to install the rattle sleeves and shims. And as, as we can see, we have some radial movement, which is normal, uh, but we should have no axial movement like that to, to this way. So yeah, I have just a smidge actually. It's not something crazy. I can live with this, but uh, when I have the rattle kit, I'm going to install it. So it has just a smidge of axial play uh, and like that is, it feels okay. Okay, I almost forget about these cups. So Payson kit has O-rings for them also. So this is the O-rings for it. So let me install them. They are just a normal rubber O-rings, nothing special. The cups are the same. So does matter where you're going to install them. So the old ones just going to um, clean up a little bit the groove. and the new o-rings so just check are they crooked actually a little bit Okay, it seems fine now. Okay, as you can see we have left with four O-rings. Two of them is for this pressure regulator valve. But I decided to buy a brand new one, so it came with new rings. So I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to install the new one. Uh, if I manage to open it up. Okay. So it came inside this unit directly. It should be installed like that, like so. So that's why we, we are not going to use two of the rings because we have two here. Um, and the other two ones is on the, how it was called, bounce coil. But right now we are not going to work on it. I'm going to replace them a little bit later. So these cups are asymmetric and you can install it only one way. So I'm going to put a little bit of silicone grease Okay. And the other one. Okay, so all them are told to spec. Once again, I'm going to install this now. Like that. Okay, so now for the helical gears. Let's, let's see, we're going to start with this one. I have bought from Basin the tools 
for the disassembly of this spherical gear. So it's pretty cool too. You're going to install it in the spherical gear like that. It's kind of snug, but it gets inside and it has no swag at all. And with this socket, you're going to be able to fit it in these two holes here. And when you install it like that, you're going to be able to undo it. So they are recommending to undo it with an impact gun. So we're going to try to do it like that. But uh, when we tighten it up, we're going to use newton meters. So let's go on the vice and try it. Actually, the threads should have thread locker on them. Okay. Okay, as we can see on the cup, the one of the shims came out, so I'm going to sort them out and going to show you after that. So this is one of the bearings. I'm going to take it with the shaft. As we can see, this is how it looks like. We have some. From, uh, this is from should be from the thread walker, I believe. Hopefully, it's not from the thread. So the other bearing. One more shim, which is going to be kind of stuck because of the oil. And yeah, actually, I'm going to probably need a 90 degree pickup tool for the outer sleeve because it's going to be a little bit stuck. So give me a second. This is the sleeve which we probably going to replace, but it's kind of stuck inside because of the threads. Maybe I'm going to need two picks. Okay. And the last shim, which is held by the oil. This is the new sleeve and shim from Basin. This is the things which we remove from the helical gear. This is the cup. This is the first shim, the bearing, this is the shaft which is going to be connected to the valve unit. Uh, this is the other bearing and this is the sleeve which we're going to replace and this is the last shim. So, we're not going to replace the bearings. Actually, I have never seen this one goes bad. It doesn't matter on what engine we are talking about, on M52, M54 and it doesn't matter, they are, are all okay most of the time. Uh, so, we're just going to replace these parts. So let me let me cut up the zip tie. This is the both shims which we're going to replace. So now I'm going to clean up a little bit the thread walker on this nut, let's call it or cup, I don't I don't know. I'm going to clean it and we're going to start assembling everything back together. Okay, so it's a good idea to clean all the thread walker in the threads in the spherical gear. So as we can see here, I clean them as good as possible. I just using this pick and I go through all the threads and I have cleaned it as on the cup. So all of them are cleaned. Yes, on the final assembly we're going to put a thread walker once again. So now I'm going to start reassembling. Basin is recommending to not put any oil inside when you are assembling this. This is not my habit, but let's do it like that. So first of all, the new sleeve. So you need to make sure that it's seated all the way in. After that is the shim. Once again, the new one from Basin. After that is one of the bearings. After that is the shaft, like so. The other bearing. Yeah, I have cleaned the shaft also. And the last shim like that and now oops we have, I have some debris here and now I'm going to install the cup without a thread walker just to see how it feels okay so it's really important when you hand tighten the cup on the top uh, the cup to be a little bit lower than the helical 
spherical gear, let's call, as we can see here, is just a smidge lower than the outside. If it's not, you have done something wrong. In our case, as we can see, it should be like that. So now, once again, let's go to the vise. So, once again, I'm going to place it in the tool. I'm going to use the socket and going to tighten it up to 55 Nm. Like that. And the thing that Basel wants you to do is to feel how the shaft is feeling like right now. As you can see, as I told you, we have a radial play as before. Let me remove it. But we should not have axial play. It feels right, it rotates as it should be. But yeah, I don't feel any axial play. If you have some axial play more than needed or if it's too snug, you're going to need uh, probably to reduce the height of the sleeve. You, you're going to need to use a sandpaper to reduce the height of the sleeve just a smidge. This is going to reduce the tightness of the shaft. So in my case it feels right, it rotates as it should be. So now I'm going to remove it once again. We then plug them. Like so. And now I'm going to put a thread locker on the threads. Okay, I'm just going to use a regular blue thread locker. It's important that the threads are degreased. So I'm going to put a little bit of it for the final assembly. Oops, this is a little bit too much. So I'm going to spread it like that. The threads are full, so I'm going to install it once again by hand. And once again I'm going to watch the cup to be a little bit lower than the spherical gear outside diameter. So now once again I'm going to tighten it up to 55 Nm. Like that. And just check it once again. Oops, yeah. Yeah, it feels, feels just right. So let me wipe up the excessive thread walker. And pretty much the first helical gear is ready. Now we're going to do the same process on the other one. I'm not going to record the, the other one because it's the same process. If I see something abnormal, I'm going to show you, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same process. So I'm not going, going to bore you with this. So that's why it's really mandatory in my opinion to take a tool like this. Because without them it's going to be really hard to do this job. It's really possible to break something. This was not so expensive. So when I'm ready with the other one, we're going to continue. So I'm going to continue with the coil. I want to clear the valve body. And for some strange reason, I'm missing two of the bolts on the coil. I don't know why, I have only two here and here and here I'm missing them. So pretty obviously someone have been here. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure is this coil good or bad. Hopefully it's going to work out because I don't have other one. And uh, yeah, later state maybe I'm going to open it up and resolder the cold solders inside if it's needed, but for now I just want to clear up the valve body and I'm not sure am I going to be able to find a bolts like this uh, because because this is sealed all together BMW is not selling these bolts separately uh, so I'm going to try to find something but I'm not sure am I going to be able because of the thickness this is kind of small diameter so let's open it up So, 
have probably have seen some water intrusion but uh, yeah I can clean it up so that's why it's a good idea to have all the bolts so to reduce the dirt which is going inside so I'm going to put this aside and the main thing that we're going to work is with this we're just going to clean it with some brake cleaner through all the holes uh, but for that I'm going to need to undo this pressure regulator so probably going to use the impact gun okay it wasn't so tight so inside actually we have a filter which I decided to buy a new one which is not mandatory because it's just a screen and you can break clean it but uh, I bought a new one because this plastic gets brittle from time to time and can break down that's why I prefer to change it because if you break down this plastic here you can cook up your valve body and uh, you're going to have hard times after that cleaning everything out so that's why it's a good idea to change it from time to time and uh, yeah it looks kind of decent it has small amount of debris uh, and actually from the base and kit we should have these two o-rings which I'm going to search after a second so as I told you I'm going to use some brake cleaner and I'm just going to spray it in these holes here until it start dripping a clean brake cleaner and after that we're going to try to energize the valves with a magnet and do the same okay so I don't have schnorchel or how to call this so to be able to fit it right through what I think I'm going to work like this without issues is going to be much more efficient so I think it's getting clean already so now I'm going to try to find a magnet and I'm going to start energizing the valves so to clean it a little bit better so I'm going to use the magnet from this uh, bolt holder and it's really it's really hard to hear it on camera but hopefully you guys are hear, hearing the valves there is really small sound which they are making but all of them are making pretty much the same sound which should be good yeah so now I'm going to hold the magnet like that I'm going to try to clean it while it's touching the valves like that I'm going to repeat this several more times okay after I don't know 100 times of opening and closing the valves let me show you the difference hopefully you remember previously now it's much more easier to catch it with the microphone yeah they are not all the same but still it's much more pronounced than before so this is the second valve this is the first one the first one is a little bit more pronounced but I cannot get them better than this but this magnet is kind of tricky to show you 
But I don't have nothing else right now. This is the third one. And the fourth one. It's clearly pronounced now. Previously, you were not able to hear it. So, I use pretty much almost one full spray of this. So, to clean it as good as possible. And see, pretty much I'm ready to install back the coil. Okay, it's good enough. So, let's install this. You can't mess them up because it's pretty obviously how it goes. Uh, right now I'm going to install these two bolts. One, yeah, let's start like that. And I'm going to try to search for other one. So, so now I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to try to find a bolt like this and uh, I'm going to assemble it back together. But before that, let's service this. <laughs> by service changing the o-rings and this filter so from the base and kit uh, i have left with four o-rings as we saw previously i i'm not going to use two of them because i have changed the supply valve with new one so i need to figure out which one are mine so i think this is yeah this should be here because this is too thin so yeah this is not ours but these ones are kind of close. So let's remove this. And yeah, this is completely flat. And it's like a plastic. So yeah, it's totally like a plastic. And this one. For sure this is ours. I'm going to try with the pliers. Okay. So let's clean it a little bit. Okay. <coughs> so let's start with the obvious one. Just check for curvature. Yes, seem just about right. And which one to use here? Okay, I'm going to go with the ticker one. Yes, yeah, seem just about right. And now the filter. So <clears throat> I think this should just be pressed in and it's going to hold in place. Yeah. Doesn't need a lot of pressure. So yeah, the bottle rings are changed with the filter and now I'm going to install it in the valve body. Uh, but the final tightening cup is going to be when I install it in the engine because right now I'm not going to have enough lever. Okay, just going to put some silicone grease on the o-rings and going to install it. Okay, like that. Okay, so I managed to find the new bolts. As we remember previously, I was missing two of these bolts which are holding the coil to the valve body. So I managed to find, uh, yeah, they are a little bit shorter. So this is the difference. Little bit shorter. But I think they are going to do the job. So I bought three of them, but uh, yeah, I'm going to use only two. You are not going to need some crazy amount of torquing of these bolts. So it's not big of a deal if they are different and uh, if the thread is not so long. So for my job I think it's going to do everything as it should be. So yeah, I'm going to tighten them up. 
probably going to I, I don't have a torque spec for these boats guys but uh, for sure they should not be torqued a lot because you're going to break them for sure so probably going to just hand tighten them up because you are not going to have a oil leak from here uh, because you don't have gasket or anything like this so yeah they are really thin boats so don't, don't apply a lot of force on them and yeah this is the new gasket I bought a whole new plate for the vanus base and ceiling only the o-rings for this if you don't want to replace this whole plate because I believe this was around 30 euro something like that I decided to buy the whole plate because I didn't know the condition of the old one that's why I changed everything but if I need to do it once again I'm going to change only these o-rings not the whole plate okay so now we're going to install the coil with the valve body and the gasket so as you can see here is thinner so this goes to the exhaust side and now we're going to install it okay so the five bolts which are holding the coil the valve body i'm going to torque them to 10 newton meters let's tighten up this valve actually it was pretty tight so this should be enough i don't have the torque spec for this but there is o-rings here so it's not the end of the world if you don't torque it exactly the spec and pretty much i believe this is everything about the assembly and yeah, about the installation of the valves unit you're going to need to check my other video about the timing chains there i'm showing exactly step by step how to install it in the engine the installation is going to be in the old video which is going to be in the description below Okay guys, pretty much it's going to be about the Vanus rebuild video. I'm going to continue the next video with the assembly of the rest of the engine. Once again, if you want to see how to install it precisely, you're going to need to watch my older video. So thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video.